Happy New Year, Tony. Thanks, Gary. What are your goals for 2012? Uh, to keep on improving, if we can. You know, well, not if we can. That's our ambition, is to keep on improving on what we've been doing. Um, we've been pleased with what we've been doing and proud of what we've been doing as a club and as a, as a team. And, and I think individually, you know, I think the players should be very proud of what they've achieved. And, uh, you know, and, and I think they are. Um, but, and, you know, the next thing is to you know, replicate some of that, that consistency that we've been able to uh, produce in the last couple of years and um, you know, hopefully exceed some of that as well. So you know, that's, that's our ambition. But uh, yeah, uh, we're looking forward to the challenge ahead of, 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 of improving, really. And how are the new players settling in? Yeah, they're good, uh, really good. Uh, um, all of them seem like they've been here for ages. So, um, Trent's our most recent uh, addition. He got here early last week and has settled in, even with this this lovely weather that we've had. With, he's a bit bit of a, uh, a climate shock for him, but uh, he's he's just got into it and uh, taken it in his stride. He's in, he's settled in really well with the boys, and they they all like him. And you know he's he uh, he's one of those people who does take things in his stride. He's pretty laid back and in terms of uh, nothing's a problem for him and he gets on with things. So, and he's brought some experience to us, and uh, which is a good thing. And uh, uh, Stefan has been here from pre-season training uh, day one and settled in really well. He, he's loving it and he looks he looks part of the, the squad and, uh, you know, he showed that even on Boxing Day. I thought he was, you know, very, very much at, a, at home with us and... Um, and uh, so he's been good. And Chris Hill is doesn't seem like a new player because he was training with us at the back end of last year. And so the players all knew him really well. And he's he's more confident about um, you know what he can bring to us as well. And I think he's he's been terrific. And uh, looking forward to a big season from all three of them. I think they've been tremendous additions. Now we always have to ask this question: Any plans to any other additions to the squad? No, no. Um, oh, yeah. Well, there is um, 11, eleven or twelve young guys who can't wait to get their chance in the top team, and uh, we've got plenty of uh, new recruits coming. Um, in, in meaning the young boys, um, there really is uh, uh, some talented young guys who are you know training on a full-time basis. We've, we're now training more young guys um, on top of our twenty-five, top twenty-five than we've ever done before, and. Uh, it's because, one because we want to give them every bit of chance of developing quicker, but also uh, the fact that they're talented and um, not far off. And I think it's you know there are some, you know, some really special uh, young men in in the in the group, and um, I think they're they're ambitious enough to maybe force their way into the first team at some stage this year. So you know we've we've for that reason we've included them in the in the full time squad and um, they're doing really well. But there's too many of them to name there. But they're, they'll almost be like new recruits for us. What's the latest on the Richie Mailer injury? Yeah, he's he's progressing pretty well. Um, uh, the forecast or the prognosis is that he probably misses. Um, the first month, of, so early March, we're open for. Um, however, uh, he's, you know, I think he's progressing. Well, his feedback is he's progressing ahead of schedule. Um, so anything before the end, um, before the start of March would be a bonus. So, but I'm, I'm sort of planning on a on a March sort of comeback for him and for Brett Hodgson around the same sort of time. So anything before that will be bonuses for both those boys. Will they be part of the trip to Australia? Oh, most definitely, yeah, yeah. That was never in doubt. And I was a bit annoyed that it got reported otherwise, you know, and particularly when the question wasn't asked, you know, were they going in the first place? I've got no problem with the question being asked, but you don't go into print and say that people aren't going on trips. And, you know, the anxiety that causes to young people, you know, is just... And it's wrong. <laughs> so um, this is, you know, primarily a training camp, and uh, so our top 25... Uh, even if 24 of them were injured, I would be all going. Um, you know, if we needed to take a team on top of that to play against South Sydney, well, we would have done that. But it's about getting our our top 25 ready for the the up and coming season. So, um, yeah, Richard and, and Brett are both well and truly on the trip, and uh, any other players who who may or may not have been injured. <laughs> Um, would have been going as well. So all the talk about there being unrest in the camp between a couple of individual players, was that all hyped out of proportion? 
Oh yeah, for sure. Um, listen, I'm, I think uh, it would be naive of uh, anybody on this earth to think that you know players don't have you know little disputes with each other and things that you know everything isn't always smooth. And so they're not denying that uh, that people don't have you know misunderstandings and all that, but. You know, it's like any workplace, you get on with things and you get on with what you need to do um, to get the job done. And, uh, and you know, these boys are, are good professionals like that and uh, you know, the, we're, they've been all training exceptionally well and, and doing what's you know, more than what's required of them. They're putting in the extra work and, and doing some of the, the things that they need to do by themselves and you know, that shows how ambitious this, this group of players are. So yeah, hey, listen, we'll have... It's like even uh, in any family, I describe it as uh, even any family have disputes from time to time, and it's up to you know the family to and the family members to sort things things through. And um, you know, then often you you come out to be stronger because of that relationship. Um, you know, but uh, certainly there's there's no not enough unrest uh, to cause any sort of major changes within our group, and um, you know that's. So all those sort of rumours, I hope, can be put to bed and moved on with, and you know, just like the players do. That's good to hear. Um, now, Australia, you're going to be playing in quite warm temperatures. You're going there for the warm weather training. When you come back, first game, Hull away. I mean, it's going to be one extreme to the other, isn't it? Have you got any concerns about that? About the difference in the climate? Yeah. No, not really. Um, you know, we, we've been um, doing the weather warm weather training for the last few years and the benefits have been that great um, in, in terms of the quality that you can train at and the, the amount of work that you can train as compared to you know some of the sun's just poking its, its head through here but uh, you know as, a, as opposed to how windy and cold and miserable it, it is at this time of the year the amount of quality work and and, and the amount of things that you can solve on a on a warm weather uh, training um, field is is uh, the the difference is remarkable. Um, you know when when you're in this sort of climate, you you got to get in and get your training done as quick as you can, and you know and, and in the best way that you can. And you know often the grounds are sloppy, and you know the, so the quality of it, it actually breaks down and. Yeah, and often you can't talk for very long with the players about certain situations. Whereas in the warm weather climate, you can sort out all those sort of things on the field without, you know, worrying about that they're going to, you know, freeze to death in the next ten minutes or suffer hypothermia while you you're solving a problem. Um, you know, it's it's shown to me in the last you know few years when we've done this sort of training that the benefits are far outweigh the negatives. And um, whilst there might be some contrast in in uh, climate, when we get back, um, I, I still, you know, weighing up the whole trip. I think the the benefits will way outweigh the the negatives, and uh, the fact that we also get back, you know, yeah. only that week before we uh, that we play uh, Hull away, um, you know, that's that's just another challenge that we'll roll our sleeves up for and see it that way as you know as, as a bit of a challenge, and you know everybody's written us off already on that game, so. Um, yeah, we'll be out there to try and surprise a few people. How competitive are you <laughs> expecting the game in Australia to be? Well, yeah, I'm hopeful that it's real competitive. Um, I'm hopeful that South's put out a real strong team. I'm, you know, I've got no uh, no control out of what sort of team that they put out, but we'll certainly be putting out our best team and in, in thereabouts, or you know, possibly our strongest team, uh, you know, as as best we can or what we think it is um, to start with and. Uh, you know, everybody will get an opportunity out there to, to you know, uh, stake a claim for that first hole game. So, uh, yeah, we, we're going for it. We've only got one friendly aside from what we had on Boxing Day. And uh, so, you know, it's it's, it's going to be competitive for us. Um, hopefully South will put out a, a top team and hopefully Kingy will be part of that and, you know, makes make some old acquaintances there as, as, as well as the Burgess brothers um, who... Uh, all our players will know very well as well. Now, you've got a lot of competition in the team, across the whole team, but at half-back in particular, quite a lot of players will be keen to get the half-back shirts. Who do you see as your starting half-backs? Yeah, I don't, I don't at the moment. Um, you know, As you mentioned, there's a lot of people staking claims for it and will be competing for it. And 
So, yeah, it's way open for me and, uh, and it's way open for them. It's up to them to stake claim for it by the, the way they perform. But, uh, you know, uh, certainly with Richard being injured, at, you know, for the first uh, little bit of the season, uh, it does open things up a little bit for a few other people. So, yeah, it, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting to see, you know, just how they perform. And, you know, they're being assessed all the time and they're competing all the time uh, in a good way um, in training. And, you know, that's a healthy thing for our club. And as you mentioned, you know, we're very strong in just about all positions. You know, the, there's not many positions you can uh, say that we haven't got a, a few people competing for, and uh, and that's that's good, uh, particularly when you take some of those young guys into account as well. You've got some big names in the camp who are coming into the last year of contract this season, including your skipper Adrian Morley and Lee Breers. I mean, what are your thoughts on, on them looking ahead? I think that's really good for them. Um, you know, they they're going to be up there to look for another contract and play really well in order to you know get their next contract so I think that's really healthy for them and you know and for the club and you know they if they play any all three of those players in Brett Hodgson and Morley and and uh, Breers if they they play anywhere like they have been playing for the last couple of years and and as consistently as they have, well, they'll have no problem getting a contract with us. And, um, you know, I'm, I know they're all keen to do that. Um, you know, but they also uh, are, are keen to get out there and show that they're competitive as well for them, for their own minds. You know, that's, that's important that they, that they feel competitive and that they're still at the top of their game. Otherwise, you know, when it comes to every athlete at some stage, they say, well, you know, enough's enough or I'm not competing as well as I used to. And... Uh, um, once they once they're convinced of themselves and and, and us as and, and as a club, I'm, I'm sure we'll you know we'll see either extensions or you know or, or otherwise you know. But I I can't see any of those players not playing to the sort of levels that they have been for the last few years. I've got a lot of faith in all three of those guys. Finally, looking away from the team, looking at the ground itself out there today, the, the, the new corners. Are, it's already a fantastic atmosphere at Halliwell Jones. What are you expecting yeah. with fifteen thousand in the ground? Fantastic! Oh, it is. It's yeah, it's awesome. We're looking forward to it. Um, it's a, it is a great atmosphere here. Um, there's two or three grounds that you go to that I think you know really are a good, a great experience. You know, and 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 give you, you know, that sporting. Uh, I don't know they, where the hairs on the back of your neck go up, and this is one of those places um, because of the atmosphere. And I, and I think it's going to be even better now, but with with the ends being closed in, it's going to capture the the sound, and uh, you know uh, I think it's uh, going to be a real spectacle as well, um, seeing the ground filled up as like we do, and uh, you know the atmosphere within it. So. Yeah, very, very excited about it. There's a lot of exciting things going on here on and off the field and has been for the last few years. And, uh, you know, it's nice being part of it. And, you know, many of those things were happening way before I got here. And uh, I'm just privileged to be part of that and I hope that it, you know, is ongoing for the club. OK, Tony, thanks for your time as always. And let's hope 2012 is a successful one for Warrington. Thank you. Cheers.